right, awesome. So my name's Trent Knox. I am the founder and CEO of Esports Business Network. Esports Business Network is founded to connect grassroots, amateur and professional uh, business professionals in the space. Um, and today uh, I wanna say thank you to Ed Cabello and the team over at Everflow for hosting this, um, this panel on uh, the evolution of gaming with uh, the implementation of influencers and affiliates. Um, we'll start off by giving everybody a minute to introduce themselves. Uh, I'll start off with James Creech with uh, Paladin. Thanks, Trent. Excited to be here. I'm James, co-founder and CEO of Paladin. We build influencer marketing software to help brands and agencies run more effective marketing campaigns. So our tools help them discover the right influencers, manage their relationships, and report on content performance across Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and, and uh, TikTok, of course. So uh, excited to be here and chat with you guys about affiliates and influencers. Great. Thank you very much for uh, being a guest on this panel. Uh, Vincent Fresh Freshette will be uh, next um, with Poem Games. Yeah, so I'm Vincent uh, from uh, Pong Games. Um, so I'm uh, head of network operations here. So Pong Games is a, a performance network where we connect uh, gaming advertisers and uh, gaming affiliates. We also do um, so a bit of digital agency side. So doing uh, paid media buys uh, for uh, so PPC, um, display, et cetera. So across all channels to fulfill the uh, user acquisition needs of uh, our advertisers. Awesome. Thank you again, uh, Vincent, for joining us on the panel. Uh, Darren uh, Malokian, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, uh, from Skills. Um, feel free to introduce yourself. For sure. Uh, Darren Malokian here from Skills. Um, I work on the business development team, um, leading our celebrity athlete and uh, affiliate partnerships. Um, a little bit about Skills. We're the first publicly traded mobile esports platform. Um, connecting players for fun, fair, meaningful competitions. Awesome. Thank you for joining us on this panel. And last but not least, Evan Hebby of Tapalti. Thanks, Trent. Yeah. <clears throat> My name is Evan Hebby. I run industry and partner marketing here at Tapalti. Tapalti's mission is to help gaming companies really um, automate and seamlessly handle the payouts process. Um, we work with some of the largest uh, gaming companies in the world, including Twitch and Roblox, and we help them manage all of their outbound payments in a seamless, streamlined way. Um, so no matter what country you're in, no matter what currency you need to get paid in, um, Topalti can help you handle um, those payments cross-border, uh, across subsidiaries, and um, help you really scale your growth uh, from a payments perspective. So really happy to be here, and uh, we definitely partner very, very much with um, Ed and the team at Everflow, as well as uh, James and the team at Paladin. So um, a lot of synergies to discuss on today's call as well. Awesome. So let's get started basically be ta by talking about um, uh, essentially defining what an influencer and what an affiliate is in, in this space. Um, I, I'm actually the best moderator from this because I come from a perspective where I've worked as an affiliate, I've worked as an influencer, and I've also worked uh, in the partner space um, directly with companies on a, on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. So um, influencers, for those who are, are curious in the gaming and esports industry, are very similar to what traditional media and new media is, uh, defines it as. Um, but it's a little bit more of a participatory role um, because a lot of gamers all are participating within uh, with de developers, uh, with sponsors, and, and people who kind of control the um, the football in a sense uh, in a different way than other uh, forms of medium. So in the influencer space, uh, it's definitely big as far as the audiences, but they also have a, a closer connection with their their audience with through platforms like Twitch, uh, which Tabalti mentioned or, or Evan mentioned earlier, and um, also with the uh, platforms like YouTube and content creation. So, and then the affiliate side uh, for those those wondering is um, more of a uh, marketing aspect as far as um, how companies partner or um, collaborate with 
uh, influencers to track those metrics. And we have different people on this panel to talk about that relationship and the metrics that go behind that. But I want to first start off by talking with James about that space because he's very close with the influencers uh, that, that uh, Paladin has a large database of different people from multiple different industries, but gaming is one of them. So if you could speak to that, uh, the influencer space a little bit. Sure. Yeah, so we do a lot of work in the gaming space. We were early to integrate Twitch uh, several years ago and they're excited about you know, the opportunity and live stream and, and the future of gaming and even esports. So we work with uh, a number of companies that help them uh, identify the right influencers, whether that's on Twitch or other platforms, Facebook gaming, YouTube, the promotional work they're doing on Twitter or Instagram, um, helping them manage those relationships. Sometimes it's an esports team uh, that is getting, you know, building a roster of their dedicated player talent. Sometimes they have streamer relationships as well that help amplify or magnify the brands. Um, and then they'll run paid sponsorships, right? They'll work with um, a brand to create a piece of branded content. They'll push it out on the stream or on the VOD. And so we're tracking all of that activity, right? We're uh, tapped into all the various social platform APIs, pulling in data like real-time um, concurrence, impressions, viewership, watch time, right? Audience demographics, who's actually watching or engaging with this content. And then we packed that up in a nice report as well as real-time dashboards um, to share that with the brand and the advertiser. Yeah. And that's sort of like a top of the funnel aspect because influencers are right there with their audience. Um, maybe in, in the middle area, uh, we could talk with Vincent as far as the relationship of connecting the devs to uh, the advertisers and vice versa, advertisers with devs in order to reach potentially influencers or even the audience uh, in um, connecting them with games um, or with products. Yeah, um, so on our end, uh, so we are really uh, performance-based companies. So for us, you know, um, direct and proper attribution is key. Uh, we um, mostly work, well, we work as uh, third parties basically. So um, between the brand and, and, and the affiliates and which are the uh, traffic source. Um, so it, it's, it's super important for us to be able to properly track this performance as else, you know, um, the, uh, the publishers, the affiliates will just don't get paid, you know, if it's not possible for us to track effectively. So this is uh, one of the big, um, you know, stakeholders for us. Um, so, you know, we mostly work with, um, so direct publishers, you know, website owners, um, so game review sites, uh, ad networks directly that will uh, have a lot of inventory uh, gaming related to monetize. Um, or, you know, even solo uh, media buyers, affiliates, uh, which are able to, you know, have developed these audience uh, uh, in time and are able to, to offer a, um, a good user acquisition channels for our advertisers. Uh, most of the ad formats, you know, are more traditional compared to uh, influencer marketing, but we still do a lot of uh, video, pre-rolls, uh, um, a lot of display as well. There, you know, there are a lot of different you know, still in very interesting placements, even, even if we say nowadays that we are more, a bit more banner blind than, <laughs> than you know, in the, in the good old days, but still that's a very effective uh, medium uh, when the campaigns are well built. And it's always a combination of channel, you know, that, that's where we are able to, to get the maximum of, of efficiency, uh, a lot of social as well. But, uh, you know, all of these are, uh, from my perspective, you know, a lot more, a, a lot easier to uh, measure uh, effectively than, than, uh, than influencer, as you said. Absolutely. So uh, a more of a, uh, a pay-per-click model or even uh, affiliate code model, right? Uh, yeah. Paper lead, uh, paper, uh, you know, uh, first registration. So we work a lot with registrations. You know, uh, yeah. Well, or deep, even deeper, uh, deeper funnel events. So post-conversion events where we, uh, you know, our advertiser will seek uh, some, uh, I don't know, um, they will give us some, uh, some, some uh, retention rate targets or, um, you know, they will pay for, they will pay a higher price, but for highly qualified traffic that will deliver a expected event. So we do optimize towards uh, these events. So, yeah. Understanding. So in the influencer space, I want to make sure that I, I, I got this across is that 
the 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 highest metric that we value influencers is in, in attention. So weighing that balance between a, a traditional form of advertising and using influencers is based on what sort of data can you get to uh, get, garner the attention of the audience, which I'll go to Darren now with skills who've ki- who's kind of used multiple different aspects, but the influencer and the affiliate marketplace is something that you are very familiar with. For sure. Um, you know, at, at skills, what we've done essentially is, is we've created a platform, like I said, built on that fun, fair, um, and at its core competition. And so what we're trying to really be is the competitive layer of the internet and, and by doing so, we've uh, enabled our community of developers um, and our users and our players to actually enjoy um, both sides of that. And so one of the ways we're, we're really trying to do this is by bringing that level of transparency, democratizing mobile games, um, and it's really persisted throughout. And so what we're seeing right now is, is on average, you know, our players are playing over an hour a day, which is twice the industry average. Um, our games on mobile have 20% more retention uh, for users playing at least 30 days. Um, And the way we've leveraged influences and affiliates is really to just further that that message. Uh, We see those as as avenues or vehicles rather to to spread the message of skills. Um, Our games aren't, um, our games are really made by our developers, they're promoted by their brands, but underneath is, is really what skills is, is driving that that engine, essentially that SDK that we provide to them to to enable those players to compete with each other um, and play for real world cash prizes um, and, and things of actual value for them. Absolutely. And, and Evan, on the monetization side with uh, Tapalti and payments, um, you work with some of the biggest name brands in the industry. Uh, you know, you mentioned Twitch, uh, Blizzard. Roblox, some of the big names out there. And with that, you know, a lot of the platforms that we're talking about within Paladin, within, uh, within Pwn Games and its skills, the, the, the process um, of getting payments to um, gamers has to be something that's um, extremely valuable to influencers and affiliates. So talk a little bit about how Topalti is helping that, um, that process. Yeah, absolutely. And, and my favorite example really to think about is is Twitch. So if you think about Twitch, they have a network of hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of streamers that stream content on the daily to um, users all across the country, all across the world. And so what Topalti really helps you do is it allows you to be kind of that that middle piece where you don't have to think about the banking and the payments relationship. So for example, if Vincent is streaming um, his League of Legends content in South America and James, Trent, um, and myself all want to watch from different places around the world, we have that ability to watch those streams very easily. And that's provided by Twitch. But how does Twitch actually make the payments to Vincent so that he's getting compensated for the streaming content that Trent, James, and I are all consuming? So that's where Topalti comes in. We're a licensed money transmitter in over 100 and, and can transact in over 196 countries. So we really can have that capability to really allow gaming companies to be as innovative and as creative as they want to be with still having that confidence that they can make those payments um, seamlessly. They can make them in accordance with all laws, rules, and international tax regulations. And that's something that's really unique to Topalti and then that we can provide that sort of platform for them to really enable what they're doing from their revenue streams and really allow them to um, not worry about the process. And I, I mentioned it, but um, I think it's worth mentioning again, Topalti is actually a Hebrew word that means I handled it. So that's our favorite compliment from our customers is understanding that they um, don't have to handle the payments processing. But when it comes to kind of gaming companies in general, I think the biggest thing for them to note is that they don't want to have to worry about all of these financial um intricacies. They don't want to have to worry about whether or not they need to be able to have a license money transmitter license in, in um, China or in Japan or in Australia to, to make their transactions happen and to um, really allow their creative teams to 
expand their their business across borders. So that's really where Topalti comes in is sort of the middleman in in helping you not have to worry about all of those kind of tedious manual processes when it comes to the payments engine. Uh, thank you. And that, that's incredibly important to people like myself. I like to get paid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, to put it simply. But uh, I kind of identified earlier that the value of influencers and affiliates uh, to brands is that attention. Now, vice versa, um, what has been your, your experience uh, with your companies um, as far as the value that the brands bring to uh, the the influencers and affiliates. I know, you know, making money is always is awesome, but what are some other, um, you know, uh, uh, non-monetary value that the brands can add to the influencer and affiliate space? Maybe I start with Darren. Great question. (laughs) Um, so, so it's skills, um, you know, although making money is, is part of the business and, and a key factor of, of our growth, uh, we have an initiative and, and we leverage our platform to advance what we call our gaming for good um, by essentially raising fun, funds and, and driving new, all new first time donors to nonprofit organizations. Um, you know, we're talking about the American Red Cross, the World Wildlife Fund, to name a few. And, and really at its core, it's something that gets the employees internally jazzed up. Um, you know, you see the Slack channels blowing up. We're talking about how awesome this is, how much money we raise for these for these great causes. Um, and that's something that really drives the mission forward. It's not necessarily a, a money-making vehicle for us, but it becomes something that's of high value for um, our audience, the people that we partner with, the organizations that we're actually pr- providing more awareness for um, through essentially fun competition. Um, and it's great. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, that is highly valuable as far as, um, the, uh, the, the aspect of giving back to, you know, important, um, important campaigns like those and, and, and being, um, being connected with the community. Uh, Vincent, what about yourself? What, what has been some of the things that you've seen as far as, um, when the developers come to you or, or the, uh, the advertisers come to you with a particular campaign, um, do they share with you any, any insight as to what, how they're able to give back to influencers and affiliates? Um, you know, it, it depends, you know, it's, I'd say it's on a per case basis, but you know, some of the non-monetary value that, that a brand can bring, you know, it's, is, is the, the trust and the confidence, you know, that, that they come to you, you know, that's because you have, uh, uh, some kind of expertise, um, and, you know, for, for the affiliates or for the, the, the publisher itself, you know, having the opportunity to, um, to promote a big brand, um, you know, it's, it, it's something that adds to, uh, to their, you know, uh, notoriety or reputation that somehow I, I'm thinking about, you know, um, um, game reviewers or, you know, content creators, um, and I'm thinking more on the, you know, uh, written medium, but, but if you if if they come to me, let's say um, we start uh, working with with, with uh, Roblox tomorrow, let's say, and, and then uh, they, uh, they they want us to uh, you know promote their brand, which is already well known. Let's say I don't think they need the <laughs> paid media anymore. But um, but you know it it and if I, I go to my uh, publishing editor and say, look, I've got Roblox. They want this type this type of traffic, and I think that uh, you you know your website or network of, of website would be you know the perfect vehicle for them to carry uh, their message to their users. Um, you know, f- for them working with a big brand, it just adds to the, you know, uh, credibility and, and, and uh, notoriety of their site. So, and this has a cumulative effect and starts a virtuous circle. So, oh, so this site works with this brand. Okay, well, we should be there too. And, and there's uh, some kind of momentum that, that's, that, that's starting from there. And again, not even talking about, you know, on, on the monetary side, but having you know some of the top gaming brands uh, being featured or advertised on 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 your properties. Well, there, there is something to it. You know, it's you, so you, you can be proud of that. Absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll hand it over to Evan, but I have like a anecdotal statement here. I mean, I've already, I'm kind of already working with, to be fully transparent, uh, working with Evan and Tapalti. And I, even though they work 
you very specifically in, um, in the monetary field, there's a lot of value at it, but I want to ask Evan with the other influencers that you've worked with and, and affiliates, what are some of the feedback they said about the value that your company has provided to them? Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's a really interesting angle because I think um, what we're seeing lately is that there's a surge in B2B companies working with influencers and affiliate networks, um, either on an individual basis or on a more, uh, um, more group basis where there's multiple influencers, multiple affiliates um, that are helping drive traffic for companies like Topalti um, and helping kind of build their brand footprints in those areas. So I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, <clears throat> When we talk to influencers and affiliates that we might want to work with to kind of expand to Palti's brand footprint, whether that's in gaming or in media or in any other industry, um, it's a two-way relationship. We're not looking to just have the influencer really um, spread the good word or evangelize uh, to Palti throughout their channels. We really want to offer a two-way working relationship. Um, and and what that really means for us is that we offer opportunities for our influencers to really expand their own brands. So whether that's um, events that we're working in, um, for example, in gaming, we'll, we attend the Game Developers Conference on an annual basis that's happening in July this year. Um, we want to give our influencers the opportunity to have their voice heard in those um, types of events. So it's not only us asking our influencers and affiliates to spread the good word of Topalti, but rather it's more asking them to combine that with the authentic message that their business is going for. So um, that we find, um, as Vincent mentioned, can be really hard to attribute um, the ROI to. Um, but at the same time, what we do find is that we see upticks in our SEO. We see more traffic being driven to our page. We see more um, engagement from our assets that have been maybe living on our site for 12 months, 14 months with limited engagement. But once we get our um, the right people to sort of start talking about um, Topalti and gaming in the same breath, then we start to see an uptick of natural um, search searches of keywords that we've been bidding on for a long time um, moving up. And, and we see a good amount of change happening um, from our our normal marketing engine, we, we can see um, some of that ROI spill over into uh, what the influencers and affiliates are doing for us. So a lot of good that comes out of it. Um, I think the, the things that we can measure are the actual number of pieces of content that we, we produce or the um, number of events that we attend. But I think really what the, the crux of it is, is it's a two-way relationship and we want to select people that are about building and scaling their gaming businesses or affiliate businesses or advertising businesses as much as we want them to kind of evangelize um, to Palti within their, their organizations, within their communities. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like I saved the best for last on this question, but James, can you speak a little bit to some of the feedback that influencers have came to you and affiliates have come to you saying this was a great campaign that they worked on? Um, because you are right there front, uh, front and center with the brands and the influencers. Yeah, sure. At Paladin, I feel like the best influencer campaigns that we see are the situations in which a brand and an influencer come together to create something that neither could do on their own, right? The brand is bringing something much more than money. The influencer is bringing more than their audience, right? It's about, okay, let's work together on the strategy. Let's produce something memorable that's going to add value to you know, our fans' lives, it's either entertaining, it's educational, like there's something inherently exciting or valuable about the content. And, you know, there's countless examples. We think of like the awesome experiences that Red Bull's created over the years, or, you know, all these other collaborations um, between brands that are helping to, you know, showcase uh, diverse voices on platforms with different types of influencers. So there's lots of really cool kind of brand campaign examples we can point to. But I think that's, you know, the, the Venn diagram of the perfect influencer campaign looks like that that collaboration, the influence in the brand working really closely on, okay, what can we create that's unique? How do we delight you know, the audience? And then from there, thinking ahead towards longer term initiatives, right? Not just a one-off campaign, but let's build towards an ongoing program where the influencer works with the brand over an extended period of time, maybe a year, maybe they're becoming more of a brand ambassador to help spotlight that brand and showcase it throughout different uh, pieces of their content over time. 
Absolutely. And again, um, you know, as we're, we're running up on about 30 minutes on this on this webinar, I want to say thank you again to Ed Cabellos and the team over at Everflow for hosting this, um, this panel. And, you know, we've mentioned a lot of different terms, like we've, we've talked a lot about a different, a lot of different keywords, and it's kind of difficult to keep up with all of this. So I'm gonna break it down a little bit. Um, so that we can we can kind of have an overall big picture of what this, what influencers and affiliates kind of fall under. And it falls under marketing in general, although there are many different departments in companies that may handle, you know, communication or interaction with, um, with influencers and affiliates. Um, you know, there are different terminologies in the business, such as influencer marketing, affiliate marketing, uh, content marketing um, and, and um, partnership marketing, a lot of different things. Um, you know, I mentioned a little bit earlier some keywords uh, such as uh, audience, but that last question kind of revolved around exposure. Um, you know, exposure for the uh, uh, for the influencer and affiliate, but also exposure for the um, the brands and getting attention. Um, which is what I, you know, basically what I explained was the, um, the highest value uh, in this business. Because in the business of reaching customers and clients, um, getting their attention is highly sought after. Um, and I guess I'll go to Vincent on this question is, what is some of the, the most successful campaigns uh, that you've seen that advertisers came to you to work with developers on? Um, you know, we've been, as I spoke about uh, Roblox a bit sooner, we've uh, worked uh, with Roblox in close partnership, you know, for um, I think since 2016 and until uh, last year where they uh, basically uh, gained, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> enough traction with their, you know, with, with their with their brand, with their name, enough, you know, um, um, uh, you know, celebrity uh, uh, towards the, you know, within the gaming sphere that they didn't need any more paid marketing channels. So th it was, it was a, like a, a tough ending for us because, you know, we've been working with them and, and, and running campaigns for so long. Um, and, and, you know, we had quite a very big and large, uh, you know, network of publishers that were, that were promoting the game. And, you know, as, 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 um, as the game became, more and more known, you know, and played and so on. Um, so yeah, the, uh, you know, everyone started knowing Roblox. So, you know, it, it, it started to get a bit saturated for, for some of the, uh, you know, of our partners, traffic partners. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's like, it's like an evergreen, you know, there's, there, there, this game is appealing to such a wide audience. Um, so yeah, this is one of the, uh, of the great use case. I can see that, uh, that one of the most successful campaigns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And speaking of an, of a successful campaign going to Darren here, uh, skills has recently, uh, formed a partnership with the NFL to develop some of, uh, s work with developers to develop games for, um, the shield. So, um, talk a little bit about how that worked and what was the process of, of, you know, making that happen. For sure. Um, you know, one thing uh, that, that we've seen, and I think everybody on this panel can, can attest to, is that mobile gaming and, and esports as a whole is really breaking into and taking a, a share of what, what traditional sports has been able to provide people for the longest time. Um, you know, it's a growing industry. There are 2.7 some odd um, billion mobile gamers out there across the world. Um, compared to the largest sport, soccer right now, or football, depending on where you're from, that that obviously is is being trumped by by the the number of people actually playing these games. And and um, for us, it was a really great intersection in terms of being able to attract obviously a, a name brand, one of the biggest leagues, the NFL, and and really coming together to figure out interesting ways to bring their audience into this mobile esports ecosystem. And so the way we started off this partnership and the way we're kicking this off essentially is by creating a developer challenge um, to give the opportunity to mom and pop developers um, and large developers alike to compete, um, to make a game for the NFL essentially. And, and 
in doing so, the, the return, the exchange for them is obviously the, the recognition for that. But they also get to use the marks and the logos of the NFL, which is significant to, to, to developers who are trying to break out there. Um, on the developer side, it's a, it's a really competitive uh, ecosystem right now. And so separating themselves is, is becoming even more difficult than it was before. Um, and so hopefully, you know, the, the value that we're providing to them through our, through our SDK is essentially and, and our, our skill-based competitive engine is going to elevate them and, and essentially their profile on in the mobile esports um, uh, industry ecosystem essentially and then provide that um, fun, exciting competition to all their players. But right now we're in, I would say the early stages of it. So we're, we have a bunch of developers who've actually signed up to compete for this. The process works where they submit proposals. We essentially have several rounds of this where we evaluate them and eventually we'll have um, a panel that'll come together to ultimately decide who gets to win that 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 wonderful prize of actually using the NFL marks, which is pretty exciting for all of us. You know, and and congratulations to that partnership and and look forward to the success of that uh, campaign. Um, I throw this over to James. I know you you might not want to you know give away your secret sauce and and talk about uh, some of the data behind it, but maybe talk about what has been one of the most successful mediums as far as streaming uh, content of uh, video um, maybe like uh, clips, things on social media um, with your influencers, as far as campaigns are concerned. Yeah. It's been an interesting evolution, right? <clears throat> if we think back to the early days of the internet, uh, we started with, you know, blogging and then you had, social media kind of arise. So you had uh, destinations like Facebook and then Twitter for microblogging, which have started with this initial thesis of a broadcast mechanism. So how do we take content and a single individual can push it out despite, you know, there's no gatekeepers. You can distribute it freely to anyone across the world. You can monetize, you can build an audience. And that's pretty powerful, right? And we've gradually seen the evolution from basic text to images, to carousels, to video, to live stream content, um, so we have a rich, you know, universe of content formats today, all of which are, are pretty popular for varying degrees. Um, I would say, you know, there's a few formats that stick out um, as particularly important at the moment. Number one is stories, right? So pioneered by Snapchat, the idea of like ephemeral content. Um, and this, this means what started as kind of messaging, right? How can I share this real life moment, uh, my experience with friends, family, and as an influencer with my followers? Uh, quickly got adopted on, on Instagram and a variety of other platforms that's become kind of a table stakes feature or content format now across multiple platforms. And then the other is short form looping video, right? What we think about as like Vine in the early days, um, today is probably best associated with TikTok, but is being quickly replicated with Instagram Reels and TikTok or YouTube Shorts. So we're seeing kind of this, this moment for short form looping video uh, which is going to continue to be important. So I think, you know, we've got a, a variety of different content formats out, which advances storytelling, lets creators produce really interesting and engaging content for their fans. And a lot of these formats are going to continue to endure. Um, the next battleground seems to be audio. Right now we've got Clubhouse and all these formats for live audio conversations, whether that's on Discord or whether that's on Twitter spaces, you know, these, these other kind of places and, and environments where those conversations can happen, but really excited about what the future of the audio space holds as well. Yeah, I am as well. I, I, I enjoy participating on these platforms, especially a webinar like this is, I feel like there's a lot of value there, um, both in the audio and the video space. Um, going to Evan, um, as a brand that is expanding in the space of gaming and esports, um, and on the side of mass payments, um, maybe talk about how, how brands are able to connect with more, um, influencers and affiliates, um, to expand their, their net, because obviously the, the value for, for Topalti comes in at, uh, the increased value for brands comes when there are more users, uh, activated on those brands. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And I, I just want to follow up on something that James was saying around um, the types of content that are out there today. And I think 
something that's really, really important is, is understanding the audience that you're trying to reach and then reaching them through that content format that they most engage with. So for gaming, for esports, like we can't write a three to seven page long white paper because gamers, creators, developers, they're not going to read it. So we need to know how to engage with them. Um, and that's going to be in the short form content type of way. So that's maybe short audio clips, short video snippets, um, designing a page to look like a, a, a gaming setup menu, things like that, that really allow you to engage with the audience that you're trying to reach out to. If you want um, a group of 14 year olds to buy um, your new fa- flavor of gum, you're not going to market it like in the same way that you would market that to a group of 30 year olds. So you need to really understand your audience. And I think the the question of authenticity is, is, is a super important one too, um, because not only on these social platforms can you get fed all kinds of different um, media or materials that might have um, grounding in something that's real, but you need to fact check that. You need to understand um, where that actually comes from and where that information is coming from. And in that same vein, it's important for brands to do that due diligence and do that research themselves as well. Because if they don't, they're gonna really um, lose out on the audiences that they're trying to reach. And they might even shoot themselves in the foot and make those audiences not apt to even wanna um, engage with them. So it it has to be a really well thought out process. And I I loved what James said around some of those different content formats. When it comes to engaging um, with influencers and um, having that uh, bi-directional relationship with a brand, um, again, I, I would highlight the the authenticity as a part of it. So I wouldn't be reaching out, um, trying to build Topalti's presence in gaming if we didn't actually have a great solution for it. And if we didn't actually already have some stakes in the ground for it. So understanding that when to start building that motion and understanding that you do need to have a little bit of a foundation um, to speak from some sort of level of power or expertise or um, getting to a place where people are going to actually listen to what you're saying. Um, That needs to be something that's ingrained into your motion as well. So understanding that you need to build up your presence in a certain industry before you start targeting it, before you start going after more influencers and affiliates, because it's, it's going to create an inauthentic, um, inauthentic feedback loop. So if we were to continue or as we continue to expand our presence in gaming, we also have to do that in conjunction with the clients that are using us for gaming in conjunction with um, our presence um, at industry events across uh, across the chasm. So there's a lot of things that go into it um, that make it really, really important to look at the authenticity of how you're expanding um, into those areas. And I think for influencers and affiliates, they can, they can read that right, right away. Um, for influencers to participate with a company that may or may not have actual reach in their industry, that could be a bad bet for them as well, because then they might lose their following. They might lose the people that have been engaging in their authentic content um, because they're like, Hey, this guy's just going for a money grab. Um, He's working with vitamin water because they're paying him a ton of money, but vitamin water has nothing to do with gamers. Like gamers don't even drink vitamin water. And that's just an example uh, out of the blue there. But if you, you you have to really think about those relationships and it makes me think about companies, um, apparel companies, one of my favorites from the past years is an example of like Gucci and Louis Vuitton. When you think of gaming, you don't necessarily think of those brands, um, Gucci, Louis Vuitton as, as being um, the things that gamers want to wear. But what they did an amazing job at is they created skins inside their games so that your players could be wearing Gucci and Louis Vuitton. And lo and behold, more and more gamers actually want to match their, their, the, the skins that their characters are wearing. So that really creates an authentic feedback loop of, okay, these brands are now, once we're non-endemic to gaming, are now becoming integrated into the gaming environment. And then you're seeing that, um, double over into into the reality so it's like okay they're in my game wearing gucci and louis vuitton and in real life i kind of want to match that same image so there's a lot of um interesting feedback loops that happen there for brands to really um prioritize authenticity i think is 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 the best piece of advice or the best um the biggest thing that i've learned in in my journey so far well, to not um, to say it shortly, we're taking this thing to the next level. So we're about <laughs> halfway through here. If you have any questions and you're hanging out watching the webinar, feel free to drop them in the Q and A. As full, uh, you know, um, 
say hello in the chat and uh, we'll give you a shout out and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll answer any of the questions you have at the last 15 minutes of, of this webinar. But I want to go back to James here because you did bring up TikTok and I feel like it's an emerging platform, especially in the gaming space. That short format content is, is, inc- is, is really making it a lot easier for people to consume uh, gaming content while they're at work, while they're on a train, where they're, wherever they are, which makes it a lot easier for brands to engage and activate with uh, new users and new customers. So talk a little bit about um, like emerging social media and the impact on influencers and, um, and affiliates. Yeah. So TikTok is really at the tip of the spear, right? They've built um, perhaps the most incredible algorithmic discovery for social content, right? That's why when you go to, when you sign into TikTok, you don't necessarily search. That's not the behavior. You're getting fed uh, information and videos that they think will will mirror your tastes. And the more time you spend watching content or engage with content, you know, like it, follow the, the person who created it, the more likely you'll get served content like that in the future, which is really interesting. Um, I think we're going to see more and more of these social platforms shift to that algorithm first kind of um, content discovery and, and viewing pattern. The other thing that TikTok has done that's really unique is making the uh, creation process super simple, right? It's easy for a creator to produce content. Um, Instagram is kind of famous for saying anyone can be a photographer, right? You don't have to be a celebrated person with the best camera. You can take a picture on your phone. You can use filters to make it uh, look really nice. TikTok is doing that kind of same approach, but with video content, making it super easy to, um, you know, layer in music or do basic editing within the app. You can also do duets. um, So you can facilitate collaborations with other influencers or brands natively through the feature set in the platform, which is really interesting. And, And TikTok is kind of, right at the cutoff of where we're seeing this change from what I think of as like social media 1.0 to this new era of social media 2.0. And and the, the, the distinction, right, is that in the 1.0 era, you had these broadcast platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, where a single user is pushing out content to to multiple followers. This new era, the the 2.0 model is more focused on community. So we think about um, private discord servers, right. Or only fans or these new social platforms where, you know, it's not about broadcasting to everyone on the internet. It's okay. I'm going to be part of this closed community and I'm going to engage with other people who share my interests. Right. And with that, we have this changing notion of identity and expression online where I'm not necessarily going to share all aspects of my personality or my identity on one platform. It's, it's fragmented across multiple platforms. So I might engage with my friends from college on one site, right? Maybe we're all connected on Facebook, but then I'm going to have, you know, private telegram group conversations, or I'm going to use community to follow my favorite sports team or influencer, or, you know, have a political discussion, right? So we're kind of breaking out our interests and our expression of those interests across different social media platforms that are increasingly tied to the sense of identity and sense of community. Absolutely. And I want to go to Darren next evolution of uh, the component between games and social media has been around since IRC were to, to Friendster, to MySpace, to Facebook, to Snapchat, now f- uh, Facebook and Twitch. Talk a little bit about skills component of social media within the platform. Definitely. Um, you know, as as a skill-based competitive platform, one of one of the best parts about competing is is being able to interact with your competitors. And so, um, even from the way we bring you into the game, where we actually show you the quick avatar or the image of your opponent, right, and in, in, in that that quick intro into the game. Um, once you actually finish the game, we actually allow you to share your scores, uh, allow people to actually join you and play against you in the game. Um, you can actually view in different depending on the format you're in, you can actually watch replays and see where your competitors did. So you can actually better enable yourself to, to compete the, the, that following tournament. Um, as far as what we're doing now and, and really trying to expand upon that, um, we have uh, a lot of things in the works that, that I wish I could <laughs> allude to and, and share on this call, but, I, but I'd probably get in trouble if I did. Uh, <laughs> Come but, on, uh, give us a little something. Yeah, right. Yeah, get me, get me in trouble. Um, <laughs> what, I can't say, what I can't say is that um, you know, we recognize that that gaming is a social um, activity, right? It's it's it 
it used to be viewed as as an isolated activity where gamers weren't actually cool like and 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 so you would think of a gamer as as so 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 sort of the solo um uh I loner somebody yeah and I, I mean for lack of better words sure yeah, absolutely. There was a stigma. There definitely was a stigma towards being a gamer. And it was sort of this, you know, elusive, nerdy part of, of something. But, you know, I'll go to Vincent on this because he's like seeing the numbers, all the data is there. Everything's going on so fast. Companies have been uh, becoming more gamified with the at addition of new technology into uh, improving their um, their workplace. So talk a little bit about um, how Pwn Games uh, and how they work with developers and advertisers implementing a gamification to the advertising aspect. Um well, I, I, I'm not sure we could uh, we could say that you know we don't we don't bring up like gamification services to uh, you know sure. to, uh, to to companies or advertisers um, uh, as said, but uh, we help you know uh, maybe smaller studios that are uh, more specialized you know towards uh, maybe a smaller gaming niche that don't have um, maybe the the the. The, um, the resources that uh, huge studios may have well to find their audience um, more easily and, and get some, you know, extended reach uh, on the web. So most of these, you know, maybe smaller studios, they don't have all this in-house marketing teams uh, that, that can, you know, uh, manage all, 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 all those channels. So the... Let me, uh, let me rephrase the question. Yeah. That's sort of pointed towards the external part i'm talking about more inter internally on the corporate culture side do you at your company have like a leaderboard or some aspect of rewarding people who have accomplished bringing more advertisers onto the onto to the company or more developers to the company oh yeah well of course like like pretty much everyone here on this panel i'm sure that we have more <laughs> more than enough dashboards and analytics you know and it's <laughs> i crave a bit uh, these kind of uh, you know productivity tool and you know having the team you know know what they're doing measuring their their success celebrating their, their success as well is 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 definitely uh, key to what we do so you know all we are you know really 100% transparent uh, with all the employees that we have about, you know, the success of the company, the, the numbers, you know, how uh, the, the sales and, you know, uh, we, we don't hide, you know, any, any metrics, any core metrics of the company. So everyone is like, um, you know, a big family and, and partnering, partnering in the success of, the, uh, of this. So, you know, having um, those metrics, those dashboard and all the TVs in the office here, well, net, not been a lot in the office in the last years, <laughs> but still, you know, that's something that we, everyone comes around, you know, knows what's important. This data is, is you know, is public and yeah, it, it is celebrated. So whether you're bringing, you know, a top advertiser that we've been, we've been after for, I don't know, six months uh, and after the relevant cold email, you know, that never got replied out of the blue. Well, you know, this, this finally pays off. That, that's an example, but, you know, uh, for those that reactivated the most, um, you know, uh, partners and, and so on, not just on the sales side, but yeah, it, I think it's important for, for organizations today to be connected to, to their data, to their metric, giving visibility to employees and, and you know, building and celebrating uh, events around that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And Evan, I look at Topalti like an octopus, you know, um, the more people involved in uh, at the company the more data that's being transacted on the on the uh, payment side what gets you excited what kind of companies come to you and and it's like wow this is a great opportunity yeah totally and i think that speaks to the core value of topalti is that we we are have set out to help <clears throat> companies with the most complex problems in payables today. So really, we're looking for companies that are growing and scaling at um, really, really fast rates. So companies that um, might only be tra transacting in the United States today, but have plans in the next three to five years to be transacting in EMEA, in APAC, um, in Australia, and, and maybe in Africa as well. Those are the types of companies that we're looking for. And those are the ones that get us really, really excited about the future of Topalti and the future of Topalti with gaming companies. So when we're thinking about um, who we're going to go after, 
we like to think about the companies that are the most ambitious and we like to, to partner with them on, on their lofty goals. Um, and being kind of in that startup mode still, we're, we're around 500 employees um, valued at around $2 billion, but we're still in that startup mode where we're willing and able to kind of cater our product to our best customers. So there's things in the product that are just there for Twitch or things in the product that are just there for companies like Canva. So there's companies um, that can really have an influence on what direction we go into um, product-wise because of um, their promise as a growing and scaling company um, globally. So those are kind of some of the things that we, we look to and we really look to, to companies with the most complex models, as I'd mentioned earlier, um, around payables to be um, part of our platform. And you mentioned MassPay earlier. I think it, 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 it makes sense to just give a little bit of a background on what that really means. Um, to us, MassPay means paying hundreds, if not thousands of people in a single click. So generally accounts payable departments have to pay for, for, for bills. So if you have um, a office supplies that you need to pay for, you get an invoice from a company and you pay that bill. But that's not how it works in mass pay. Um, for gaming companies, um, we'll use that Twitch example again. Um, if a thousand people are streaming your Twitch stream around the, around the globe, there needs to be a seamless way where all of those thousand streamers who are paying $1.99 pay the person who's streaming that content. How it works is really those thousand streamers pay Twitch and then Twitch mass pays out to the streamer based on that, um, based on that, uh, that model there. So that's something that um, Topolti is really, really unique um, and, and great at doing is, is helping make those payments uh, seamless to thousands, if not more, uh, of folks at the same time and, and making sure that all of those payments get consolidated and are accurately um, reflected. And that's why we partner with people like Paladin and Everflow to ensure that those payments are, are, are accurate on time and, and are hitting people's bank accounts and, and keeping them happy. So um, like you said, Trent, I think you're, you are you, you understand um, to Pulte uniquely from that aspect because yeah. it's your money on the line. You're waiting to get paid. And so you need to make sure that you get paid. And um, if you don't, especially for small tournament organizers or small um, esports teams, that can pigeonhole you for, for months. Um, and that can give you a, a, a disadvantage when you're growing, um, looking to grow and scale quickly. So we like to be that, that enabling engine um, behind companies to allow them to scale and grow at the rates that they're hoping to. Absolutely. And as we, we wrap it up here in the, in the last seven minutes here, um, I want to, we've been talking about the um, your mainstream. We talked a little bit about the, uh, the cutting edge, but now let's go directly to the bleeding edge. Right here, we're going to be talking about AR, VR, and mixed reality and the component of influencers and affiliates in the space. It's a small market now, but it's going to be a large market in the future for, um, for the gaming and esports industry with new esports within that specific space as far as competition and also casual gaming opportunities. I'm sure Skills is looking at it, Pwn Games, Paladin. Evan, everybody's looking at this um, as the new way because we just came out of this pandemic. Quarantine was a component of moving this uh, ball forward a lot faster. Um, you know, the the cost to acquire uh, a VR headset has has be gotten to the same level of, as consoles, whereas in previous years it was more along the lines of uh, um, a high ticket um, product value. Um, maybe talk to Vin talk with Vincent first. Are you looking at this space from an advertiser uh, component or a, um, a developer component? You know, what thrills me the most with this would be probably be AR, you know, or VR, because, you know, uh, we, we, we still live in that reality and, you know, uh, VR is pretty deep, you know, you, be, you need to be in your own stuff and you're really uh, absorbed and but in your day to day uh, moment, you know, uh, I can foresee that AR will be very well integrated uh, with our, you know, day-to-day -day routine. So whether is it like in the glasses or, you know, we don't know <laughs> where th this will go, but, you know, I think this layer of reality, um, there's so many, uh, you know, opportunities uh, from, you know, a, uh, 
advertising a point of view that, that can arise for, from that. And I don't see tomorrow, you know, virtual billboards adding on, on, on everything for, you know, a critical mass of people. But um, I, I think the perspectives are, are really exciting. And, you know, having in real life what we start seeing with in-game placements opens up a lot and, you know, crop, Cross that with you know uh, audiences, your own preference, and 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 having the control on, on what you can see. I think for brands uh, and for you know advertising in general, this uh, this is uh, there is something in there definitely. Thank you for adding value there, Vincent. I know we've got five minutes left, so I want to give people the opportunity to um, or the panelists the opportunity to tell the audience how they can find you, how they can connect with you and uh, follow the stories of, of your companies. So uh, first I'll start with Evan um, as I started with him first or last at the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks Trent. Um, yeah. If you are a gaming company looking to kind of scale your financial operations um, and looking to expand into new geographies and new territories and, um, thinking about how you're going to manage those payments um, to your vendors, to your partners, to your creators, to your streamers. That's when you really um, will be a good fit to at least have a conversation with Topalti. So please um, either reach out um, via email or just log on to our website and you can connect with us um, or, or reach out to the organizers of today's events and they can definitely put you in contact with me and I can get you in touch with the right folks to have that conversation. But again, thanks to Ed, thanks to Michael and the rest of the Everflow team and Trent for hosting today's event. It's been a great experience and uh, we look forward to doing more, more work with you guys in the future. And then Darren. Uh... Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, um, you know, echoing what, what Evan says, first off, thank you, Ed, Michael, um, Everflow team, Trent, obviously for being a great moderator. Um, and the rest of the panel for, for obviously providing me with some insights and, and learnings, obviously, that I'll take away from here. Um, that being said, if you are interested, you know, we're, we're always looking to, to partner with, with brands that are going to be both accretive to us, but also provide value back um, to themselves and, and their users and, and their audience. Uh, we have a, a really interesting product called our hosted tournaments which is something, you know, I, I wanted to make sure I mentioned before, before hopping off here, that is uh, really tailored to bringing your brand to life, um, introducing what we call these playable ad units uh, to a captive audience. And, and I feel like if your brand is interested in getting uh, more out there about brand awareness, product awareness, or just, just in terms of brand recognition in general, um, we'd love to chat with you. And so obviously reach out to the Everflow team. Um, you can obviously connect with me on LinkedIn or, or just drop us a line um, through our website. Awesome, thank you, and Vincent? Yeah, and uh, also like to thank the uh, Everflow team. Uh, you know, we've been uh, working together for a, quite a long time now, and uh, you know, you guys are doing a great job. Thanks for the opportunity uh, for that panel today. Thank you, Trent, for, uh, for the animation today. Um, and guys, it was a pleasure to, uh, to talk with you and know you. Um, so it, whether you're, you know, an advertiser, a gaming studio that, that want to get, uh, you know, uh, their reach, uh, out there and get, get, uh, uh, your user acquisition, um, expanded there. Well, that's what we do. Um, if you're an affiliate looking for the, uh, you know, the best game to promote out there, well, contact us as well. We can definitely help you make more with your traffic and, um, yeah, it was nice, uh, chatting with you guys today. Awesome. And James. Thanks again, everybody. This was a lot of fun. If you're interested to learn more about Paladin and our software to help you run more effective influencer campaigns, check us out at paladinsoftware.com. I'm James Creech on, uh, on LinkedIn. It's probably the primary way I engage with most people. Uh, I publish frequently on there. I also host a podcast called All Things Video, where I interview uh, founders and entrepreneurs in the digital media ecosystem, everything from gaming to music to entertainment. So um, would love to connect with new people and have some good conversations. Awesome. Uh, and last but not least, thanks for joining us on the evolution of gaming with influencers and affiliates. Uh, again, thanks to Ed Cabellos and the team over Everflow for hosting this uh, panel. And um, I'm Trent Knox. 
the, the uh, founder and CEO of Esports Business Network. I also host a podcast, the Esports Business Network podcast. If you'd like to hear more in depth on particular niches within the gaming and esports space, uh, I'd appreciate you going over there and l- taking a listen to that. Also, look for me on LinkedIn, uh, Trent Knox. Thank you.